All right, guys, welcome to this episode on level two and understanding level two. Um, level two is this on the right hand side that you see here with the, the numbers. Um, other people like using level twos that look like this. It's the same thing. If you look at the ask and the bid, um, it will tell you that there are people sitting on the 171, 200 of them. So if you add these up, 59, 45, 27, it will add up to the 209. And it's always changing. Um, for me, it's always easier to use this. is more visual for me. So I know where people are sitting on the lines of where's your support and where's your resistance. Okay. Um, when I scout a trade, I'm always looking at the 30-minute chart. Oh, see, I'm here. And what I'm looking for is to see if it would what to it would to break this area, the 171 area. Where will it, the next level be? Because you, so you see right now, that's my resistance line. If you look to the right, I have 217 um, asks in that area that that are heavily you know sitting there. On the price action here, it tells you all the buyers and their sellers are coming in. So you can see which one is getting chewed up faster. So it's kind of like a battle between the ask and the bids to find out who is going to win. Is it going to put, be pushed down or is it going to go through? But now let's say it does break through. And you want to find out where is your next support resistance. Um, in this case, you can see that at 175, there's another group sitting there waiting. But let's say you wouldn't have known that. Because sometimes this is always moving, it's always changing, and then it will always show up until the last minute until you get there. So I always go back up to the 30 minutes where I would have been in my, in my trade looking at when I, was, I should have gotten in and say, okay, well, where is the last time it went up there? So if, let's say, it breaks through this fractal, then my next line will be looking to the left. Where is the, the last line? It will be right about right here. It's an area. This will be the 179 area, what I'll be looking at. Okay, so if it gets through that, where is the next area that would try to be? Well, I'd try to find where it had the next resistance, the next line. It would be about right here, 197. So now going back to the one minute, if I were to push this down, if it does break through, you figure it should run somewhere between where is that now and up there. I'm kind of doing this kind of fast right now because this is live and these numbers are always going to change. So what I want to focus on is on level two area. If you notice that right now the ask are heavier than the bids. So that means it's going to have a tough time trying to break through that area. So you always look to see if the momentum is coming in or if it's falling apart. The bigger the number, the bigger the push to the downside, the harder it is for them to break through. Once it does break through, where is the next resistance line going to be? But let's say, for example, the ask pushed the bids down. All of a sudden, as these things start to get chewed up and they disappear because people are selling, you'll see the next resistance or support, excuse me, on the bottom is at 164. So somewhere about right here. Oops, I need to move this up a little bit. I should do this. Hmm, let's see if I can move my charts a little bit so you can see it. Doing this live is a little harder. Um, so about 164, you got support according to this. Now this will move on you. So this is why I don't like doing my lines with this. I'd rather do it off the charts and previous supports and resistance because they're a lot more dependable than these guys. These guys will be sitting here right now and in about a minute or so it will disappear for no reason and then that it's gone. So the idea is you're trying to see who's getting chewed up more. You know, so as of right now, the you know the resistance is winning big time. Because look at the numbers, they're way higher than the than the little guys. Does this mean that this will hold? No, it could break. I mean I somebody can come in and buy a million shares and it'll break right through there. So the idea is to keep an eye on what's happening here are they buying are they selling more just be patient wait it out and this is where it kind of lets you know if something's going to hold like right now 169 that line is trying to hold and if you were let's say trying to figure out if you should get out of the stock or stay in the stock you would hold on to the line and see is will it violate that area as of right now it's holding so you have not no reason to to worry about it and you would also be using your signals, your um, 
uh, moving averages and everything else, the 30 minutes and all these charts, because you cannot just sit here and just watch this and expect to see the bigger picture. It just doesn't work like that. You have to kind of like sit there and see the bigger picture, see what's going on on the 30 minute, see where your assistance and the, and the support is. Find out what held before, what didn't hold before, and then make a bigger, cleaner decision. Actually, the lines are being done, drawn for me. Here's the last fractal where this red line is. So if it falls below that, then the market is changing direction. All right, as of right now, it's, it's telling you that it's staying inside a range. About right there. So it has to break outside of that range. So until the market actually does out anything outside of this area, you can even do it right here. Yeah, but just put it right on the red line. Man, those those um, uh, trend lines, you know, studies are amazing. They really read these things for you and helps you save a lot of time than going back. Uh, they drew the green and the red lines. They drew these tunnel. What is it? You know, what is it uh, inside of the channel that it's in? It really helps you figure out if you're in a losing battle, are you swimming upstream, or what is you know what are you working on? And as of right now, this looks like going to be a battle all the way to the end. Maybe just nothing's going to happen. You know, you got maybe about six minutes left of this. I'm just waiting to see if it's, it does anything. Let me pause it for a second to see if anything will happen. All right, still waiting. Yeah, these guys are just going to be holding this line. So it doesn't look like it's going to break through it. But this is practically what you will be looking for to see if the bids are going to be falling apart or if the asks are going to be falling apart. In this case, it's the battle of keeping it to this minute here. So it doesn't look like it's going to break through for this particular trade. Um, so you really don't have, oh, there comes a little bit more. Pushing to the upside. The asks are getting chewed up. Let's see if it breaks the 170. You have a lot more bids holding the line. And this is kind of how, what will help you see what's going on, the battle behind the scenes, like who's going to win on this one. As of right now, my push to 170. Let's see. We'll remove that line, make this a little bit bigger. Right now, it's just trying to get out of the 170 line. Come on. Three minutes left. How long is this video going to be? See, the sellers are coming in. Oh, if there's more sellers than buyers, I might push to the downside. Yep, the sellers, more sellers are coming in. Big chunk of buyers. Yeah, it looks like this is going to be a stalemate all the way to the end. So. Hopefully this will help you guys understand the level two area. It doesn't look like this is going to give us much. So I'll either try to find another video that will give us a cleaner, cleaner view of what this looks like, or I'll put this out for right now, and hopefully this will help you guys understand. All right, see you guys in the trading room.